Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Sri Lanka. We're upstairs. Um, how many of you here work in some evaluation capacity or monitoring capacity in your in your offices? Don't be shy. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so that's the majority of you. So imagine that you come into work one day, and you're told, okay, well, the, the head of the office, the director, or the secretary, who's the head. Minister wants to see you. He says, I want to see my, my monitoring evaluation person. So you go in and the, your boss asks you, not your boss, but your boss's boss, your boss's boss's boss, asks you, how are we doing? And you say, oh, I'm doing fine, thanks. You know, my little one just started school. And then, no, no, no. I mean, how are we doing as an agency? He says, oh, well, you know, very well. We just started this new study in Bihar and it's going very well. We could, no, 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 no. How are we doing as an agency? Oh, well, well, very well. We've done some evaluations, and so the projects have all spent all their budgets, and we've employed all these teachers. No, no, no. How? He's still speaking to you. He's getting a bit annoyed by now. How are we doing as an agency? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. You don't understand me. How are we doing? We are, we are meant to improve people's lives. Tell me what we're doing to improve people's lives. How many people have been lifted out of poverty by our program? How many women have been in power? How many children have been sent to school as a result of our program? Can you answer that question? The fact is, in the vast majority of agencies, they have no way of being able to answer those questions. They have nothing like a system, what I call an agency-wide performance measurement system, that actually tells them how their agency is performing. So this talk is about what, is the, what are the questions we need to answer to have an agency-wide performance measurement system? And what are the characteristics of that system? And I'm going to start as a... There's, there has been, in recent years, a huge rise in the results agenda in development agencies. So many agencies, like the Netherlands here and um, Canada, produce what they call results reports that you would think, by their title, tell us what results that agency has achieved in contributing towards global poverty reduction, getting girls in school and so on. But they do nothing of the sort. Because they don't use the right tools, the right information, to answer those questions. To see why that is, let's go back and take the example of the first, one of the first countries to go down this road. In 1993, the US government introduced the Government Results and Performance Act that required all government agencies to put in place a results framework by which they'd be able to measure the results of that agency. So, to take the example of USID, USID identified six strategic goals. So, for example, broad-based economic growth and cultural development uh, were encouraged as a goal, and then for each goal, they had a number of indicators. So, for example, for the broad-based economic growth, strategic uh, development goal, the indicator was average annual economic growth rates in real capita income above 1%. That was their, their target indicator for achieving the economic growth goal. And so, they were producing annual results reports reported on per capita GDP growth in the main recipients of US foreign assistance. So here, for example, the, 19, the FY2000 performance report tells us that nearly 70% of USID-assisted countries were growing at positive rates in the second half of the 90s, compared to only 45% of the early part of the decade. However, as this report, the one produced by USD in 2000, but not earlier reports recognised, we cannot reasonably attribute overall country progress to USID programmes. This statement they've got in the result programme, in their results report, can't actually tell us anything about what USID programmes are achieving. The government, the GAO, the Government Accounting Office in the US, is responsible for receiving and reviewing these results reports, in reviewing this report, said that the indicators that USID was using 
were so broad and progress affected by so many factors other than USA programs that the indicators could not realistically serve as measures of the age specific efforts. So the USAID was monitoring outcomes to measure its performance. But they themselves recognized and were told by, in no uncertain terms by GAO, outcome monitoring does not tell us what your agency has achieved. Now, unfortunately, so, so USAID abandoned the strategic indicators as performance measures. They reported them still as development performance benchmarks. They didn't claim any longer. They told us anything about the performance of their own agency. What were they replacing it with? Unfortunately, USAID is an exception. For most agencies, what they call results reporting, or even impact, this example is from the Dutch report, is still an exercise in, in outcome monitoring. So, in, what's the impact of Dutch aid? There's less poverty from everywhere, and there's a graph of poverty over time across the developing world, and that's in what's called a results report. Um, the chair of FreeI, Richard Manning, told me that recently he attended a DFID workshop on DFID sector support to the health sector in ERISA, and the DFID program officers were saying mortality has fallen in ERISA while we've been providing risk support, so the program must have worked. Where have these people been for the last 10 years? Okay, now there is an important role for outcome monitoring. I'm not saying there isn't. So here's the example of the government annual performance report produced by the government of Uganda. They have, as they do here in, uh, in India, as uh, introduced by Dr. Ray's office, a very comprehensive monitoring system with indicators across the log frame, inputs, activities, outputs, and what the annual report can tell us is, do we have data that tells us that we know what we're, what we're doing, and many cases don't have, and if we do have, are we on track with our school building program, our teacher training program, in recruiting new nurses and so on. This is useful information, but it's not telling us the impact of our programs. So, outcome monitoring is important. I'm not saying don't do it, but do not mistake it for results. Only impact evaluation can tell us what difference we're making. So what do we need to determine a result system? What do we need an agency-wide performance measurement system that really tells us about results? And what's the role of impact evaluation? So this results agenda has been going on for the last 15 years or so in, in most development agencies. And they've mostly gone down the route of outcome monitoring. Meanwhile, there's been a huge rise in impact evaluations. This is the number of impact evaluations conducted in the development sector on an annual basis. So it's grown from negligible numbers, so the access got messed up, it's grown from negligible numbers in the 1980s through to the 19, early 2000s, but grown actually more than exponentially since then to nearly 300 new studies a year. So massive growth in impact evaluations across the world. So you spread it across the whole world, it's still not very thick coverage a huge rise in the number of impact evaluations. So the question is, can we be using these impact evaluations in some way to actually help think about results? What do we need to do to establish a credible agency-wide performance measurement system? Now, I'm going to talk about... Oh, okay. So there are a number of issues to be addressed in answering that question. The first set of issues are what I call the AAA principles. The AAA principles are alignment. That when you say a project is successful, that means that actually what it's achieving is aligned with helping you achieve your agency's goals overall. The second day is attribution. That when you say a project is succeeding, it's a successful project, it actually means it's making a difference to the outcomes which you're interested in achieving with that project you can make some causal statement about what that project's achieving, not outcome monitoring, but something that allows you to know that your project's making a difference to the outcomes you're interested in. And find, find more accountability. Where'd that come from? <laughs> the third A is not accountability. Maybe we have four A's, but the third one in my system is aggregation. So where? Wow. Okay, it's aggregation. Um, when, so you're able to take the results from individual projects and add them up across the agency to get overall agency 
wide measurement, uh, measurement of agency performance. There's some other issues to be addressed. One is accountability versus lesson learning. Are you using a system to just say how you're doing or to learn this, uh, lessons from that? And a related issue is that of having feedback loops. So in this discussion, I'm going to draw on the experience of a number of agencies. So EFAD has some interesting good experience and bad experience to draw on. EFAD has a system called RIMS, which makes their project evaluation system very closely aligned with their objectives, but has some serious flaws in the design. But they have a more recent initiative to, to aggregate their actual contribution to poverty reduction. And I'll talk a bit more about it in a while. Going to Oxfam GB, Oxfam GB has an overall results framework which relies heavily on impact evaluation as part of the performance measurement system. Oxfam GB is interesting, they spent two years developing a results framework. They spent two years consulting all of their country offices who carried out consultations nationally to develop a set of indicators to be used by every Oxfam project, to be used in every Oxfam national program, to be aggregated across the globally to talk about Oxfam's performance using outcome monitoring. And after two years designing that system, they abandoned it. They said, that's not right. That's not going to tell us what we need to know. And they went into a system instead based on 30 impact evaluations a year based on a random sample of their programs. The Ugandan system I talked about already, they have a good outcome monitoring system, but it's supplemented by a government evaluation facility that also carries out evaluations of selected programs. The World Bank has a well-established performance agent-wide agent performance monitoring system, measurement system based on ratings. I'll talk more about them. Intervent Development Bank is somewhat similar, but in the last few years has seen a massive expansion of impact evaluations, even more than the World Bank. Last year, 50% of all new IDB loans had impact evaluations built into them. Huge number. And finally, the Millennium Challenge Corporation in the US, which has, from its start, always intended to do impact evaluations with its programs. The drawing from their experience. So these are some of the agencies that came together in a recent workshop held uh, jointly between NORAD and 3 i in Oslo to discuss precisely this issue of agency-wide performance measurement systems. And it's this experience I'm drawing on in giving this talk. So the first issue is alignment. So alignment means that project success means agency goals are being met. If projects are saying successful, it somehow means the agency goals are being achieved. So this means that project objectives align with agency goals. So when you have an ob objective in a project, it should be about doing something <coughs> that relates to the goals you have for that agency. There is some tension here. So the World Bank's vision statement, the overall goal, is working for a world free of poverty. But the World Bank does things like financial sector reform. The utility sector reform, where you retrench large numbers of workers to try and achieve more cost-effective utility um, generation and distribution and so on. The causal chain between those sort of projects and poverty reduction, it's there, I'm not saying there isn't one, but it's quite long it would be difficult to calibrate the precise extent to which a financial sector reform project lifts people, lifts people out of poverty. And I wouldn't think it's sensible to try and do that. So this is the tension between saying you want to have alignment between your objectives and what the overall goals are, depending on your agency. If you really do focused programs where you can directly link always the outcomes of your project to your overall goal, then you can, you can be very strongly aligned. If you're a large agency with a very diverse portfolio, you're going to find this alignment that creates tensions. And one of the things that came out in this um, in the discussion in Oslo was the uh, chair of Gray from IGB said, you know, we, we actually resist this, that we're being told by the results people we have to report on results like number of people lived out of poverty by the programs. And it doesn't make sense for these particular programs. I remember back when DFID first started having log frames at the country level, log frames imposed on all projects, which had to have higher order poverty production objectives. One of the projects I looked at um, was a public sector, it was called a budget support for public sector reform, but actually it was to pay retrenchment packages, public sector workers. And the overall goal they had chosen was reduction to maternal mortality. It makes no sense whatsoever. 
there is no real plausible causal chain between retention, retention of public sector workers reducing maternal mortality, which allows the indicator anyway if you can't measure it very well and over a long time now. So you can probably never use it directly. Um, so there, but there's this tension here. You can try and measure, you can try and achieve alignment directly. So you, you do have the requirement that in your project outcome indicators, you have indicators related directly to your goals. And this is what EFAD has. So EFAD has a goal to lift 80 million, 80 million, 80 million people out of poverty, and it has goals to reduce malnutrition. And all projects are required to measure poverty rates and malnutrition rates. This is a system called RIMS, I don't know what it stands for, but a system called RIMS they have. All projects funded by EFAD are required to collect data using the RIMS survey. I mentioned before that it's flawed, the RIMS approach is flawed because when they introduced RIMS they made a decision not to have a comparison group. As a policy decision we won't have comparison groups. So they undermine their ability to conduct counterfactual analysis. They also collect data in project areas with no questions whatsoever about whether the people being surveyed actually participated in the project or not. So you can't really, you can do an intention to treat analysis, but given the low penetration of most projects, you're unable to be able to do probably most, much meaningful analysis using RIMS. Um, Oxfam is similar, they're doing impact evaluations where the outcome indicators are linked to Oxfam's poverty reduction goals. But you can also have alignment indirectly where when you rate a project, and this is what's done in the multilateral development banks, multilateral development banks like the World Bank and IDB systematically rate all of their projects, extremely unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory, satisfactory, or extremely satisfactory, four points together. And to be satisfactory means that you achieve the project's achievement objectives. If it's uh, if satisfactory, it's by and large achieving them, and it's, it's extremely satisfactory, it's achieving nearly all of its objectives. And as long as you've got alignment, alignment would mean that the objectives reflect the goals of the agency overall. And so this is indirect, an indirect way of alignment, because you're just saying, if it's satisfactory, that means it's meeting objectives, and objectives reflect the goals of the agency. But you're not directly measuring success against those in the agencies, in the performance measurement system. Attribution is that the changes in, in outcomes are attributable to the agency. Now, you can do that directly. Again, Oxfam and EFAD are examples. Oxfam and EFAD are doing impact evaluations of a sample of their programs to address whether they're lifting people out of poverty or not. So EFAD has commissioned, or is in the process of commissioning, 30 impact evaluations focused specifically on the question of how many projects, I'm sorry, how many people did those projects lift out of poverty? And then using this, those sample results, they'll scale up to the portfolio as a whole to see how many people overall have had lifted out of poverty over the period they're referring to. And so there's a direct, your attribution there directly in the, in, the, um, in the studies. Oxfam also uses impact evaluations. But you can't always have, you won't always have impact evaluations for all your programs. So in some cases, what you want to have is sufficient evidence of a causal relationship. So this doesn't mean you rely on outcome monitoring. It does not allow you to require on before versus self analysis. What you, what you rely on is causal chain analysis. You have a good theory of change about how it is you think the program is going to achieve its objectives to achieve the change in outcomes you want to achieve. And you document that causal chain as far as you can. Was the project being implemented in the first place? over the, the desired target area. It was meant to reach three districts, 500 villages. Did it actually operate in all three districts and reach 500 villages? It was meant to reach low poverty line people. Did it reach only BPLs or was there leakage in non-BPL households? So you can look at, was it being added, carried out on the scale you intended? Was it reaching the people you intended? You could, people were meant to attend training you can do through a process evaluation, look where people actually acquired information through that training. You can see, um, look at changes in practices. If it's generating assets, for example, then you can see that's creating the quality of those assets, and those assets are being used. You can look at a lot of stuff in the causal chain. 
And then the final step of the causal chain, you say, well, we know from evidence elsewhere that this sort of project, which is his outputs, is likely to have his outcomes. Based on other evaluation evidence, other systematic review evidence, we know credits like this tend to produce the outcomes we expect to see. You go as far down the causal chain as you can and use plausible association to, to then attribute that, attribute the change in outcomes we're seeing to the project based on the causal chain analysis. And that causal chain analysis will probably allow you to say something about you know, the out change in outcomes is far more than we can expect to explain by this project alone. Something akin to contribution analysis. So you can't do rigorous impact evaluation of all your projects, so you rely on some part on sufficient evidence and plausible association for some part of them. In the IUG rating system, so this is an independent evaluation group of the World Bank, that rates the projects carried out by the World Bank, they have what they call the no benefit of doubt principle. So you have to be producing credible evidence or credible arguments that there was an impact on your program, your program made a difference. Simply saying we did this project, we know the projects work, or doing outcome monitoring is not sufficient. You have to make some sort of causal argument based on the evidence. And so you're pushing, you're pushing your performance measurement system to really try and make causal statements. Outcome monitoring doesn't wash. You've got to, in each case, say, what can we say about causality between the outputs we got and the outcomes we want to achieve? How much that change in outcomes is responsible for the result of this project? This doesn't mean IE for every project. That's the point I made here. You're not going to do IE for every project. You're going to do it for a sample of projects. 50% being done in IDB is probably too high. We're looking at a much smaller sample in most cases. Aggregation. This means you add up the projects across the agency. This is the key thing your boss, in my example, so I wanted to know. Because you were told about done impact evaluation, there's one project in Bihar, showed a positive impact of women's empowerment, and say, well, fine, that's one project. We're doing 500 projects. What about the overall performance? This is aggregation project, single indicator. So that's one way of doing it, a direct way of aggregation. You pick a single indicator and you aggregate across that. The indirect way is a rating system. So you can add up apples and oranges if you want to know how many pieces of fruit you have. And the pieces of fruit we have are successful projects. Successful projects are ones that are achieving their outcomes and those outcomes are aligned with agency goals and success means some attributable statement about the project making difference those outcomes. And if success means that, then we can add up across the uh, portfolio and say 80% of our projects are satisfactory. And that should mean that actually achieving goals that align to our agency objectives and satisfactory means we actually can make some causal statement about the fact that this intervention is making a change to the outcomes of interest. So those three things have to be in place to be able for the agency-wide performance measurement system to work. There are some tensions in doing this, as shown by the agencies that have been trying to implement the system. All of those of you who have been trying to impact evaluations in your agency will know that is difficult because there's resistance amongst program staff doing, to doing impact evaluation. But other problems arise as well. And one is accountability versus lesson learning. This should not need, really need to be attention. You would think that you can do well designed impact evaluations that will give you accountability, I will make a difference, but also give you lesson learning. Tell you valuable lessons that we can use for uh, our improving program design, improving investment decisions. But actually this tension has um, risen. So people have selected IEs because they were easy to do, for example, because it was an intervention very meaningful with randomization, rather than being an IE selected because there's a lot of lesson learning potential from that intervention. You need evaluation designs which allow us to answer questions about why things worked rather than just if they worked. And we know, this is what 3IE preaches, this means we have mixed methods, theory based evaluation design. And don't get pushed into doing silly IEs just for, say, particular box you did an impact evaluation. So the prime example of this that we have from the, the group that came to Oslo is the Millennium Challenge Corporation. 
So the Land Transit Corporation has these five-year compacts with the country. So during the five years, they have to set up a project, do the project, and then evaluate, do the impact evaluation. It's a very short time frame. So they had an irrigation project, and they did the baseline, and they got to year four, they were needed to do the impact evaluation. But they said, well, we haven't actually finished construction of irrigation yet, so no one's been constructed to be connected to irrigation water, so what's the point? So we can't do an impact evaluation. But they said, oh no, the farmers have been trained. We've been going around training farmer groups, so at least do an impact evaluation of the impact of the training. And they did it and found no impact. But the point was, the training farms received were training on how to use irrigation. <laughs> and there wasn't any. So the pressure to do an impact evaluation and tick the box we'd done one was so great, they went ahead and spent a lot of money doing one that made no sense whatsoever. So you know, don't be pushed into doing silly impact evaluations. I mean, we do see rather more than those than we'd like. To date, agencies don't actually have lesson learning in their impact evaluations. They're doing them. A lot of agencies now are doing impact evaluations because they're meant to do them, but actually trying to learn across those in some systematic way, it's not there. The IDB, the Indian Land Bank, have started to do this. They, in their, their annual performance report has a section now on lesson learned from impact evaluations. But it's uh, still an, ex an exception as a rule. And you need feedback loops. Don't create systems for Christian systems' sake. There's a long history in m and &E in creating very complex m and &E systems, which are monitoring systems, that are used by no one. It can be quite depressing being a monitoring specialist sometimes, because you generate loads and loads and loads of data which no one ever looks at. And there's no point in doing that. Only generate data if the data are going to be used. So you need a results of monitoring system. Um, oh, sorry. So that's just what I'm going there. So a, a counter example is again Uganda, where they have an annual performance monitoring report, but also a half yearly report. And they have a cabinet retreat each six months to look at that report. Now, it's outcome monitoring, so it can't have that impact, but it can tell you that agencies don't have data for very many of their indicators. They don't know how many hospitals there are in Uganda, even though they're in the Ministry of Health. Okay, so it points to severe shortcomings in their MIS. Secondly, if they have got data, they can see they're on track producing the output. Okay, you said you're going to rehabilitate 1,000 kilometers of road. We've allocated the whole budget to for the year. We've only done 500. Why? And these are the discussions that happen. The president, the president goes to these meetings, and he is asking ministers, why? Why are you taking the whole money, only done half the job you said you were going to do? So it's a very useful use of an outcome monitoring system with the indicators across the causal chain. But if you want to know why things are failing, you often need evaluation. And currently in Uganda, the problem is the evaluation facility is off on the side. It's not integrated into these cabinet discussions. In South Africa, as another example, South Africa, every evaluation being produced by the new evaluation system and the evaluation plans goes to cabinet and has a cabinet level discussion. You can institutionalize the lesson learning that you get from this. So the MDBs have tracking systems. They're built on having a full management response to every report, management has to give a response to what they think of the evaluation, and then we have high level agreement on what's going to happen in, a respo in, result, uh, in response to that evaluation. So the board level in, the MD in World Bank or IDB or Cabinet of South Africa makes decisions on policies to be changed or implemented as a result of that evaluation, changes in practice or whatever. And then they're followed up on, on an annual basis, in the MDBs by tracking whether recommendations have been implemented, adopted or not. And that annual tracking report goes back to cabinet or back to the board so they can say, Ministry of Education said they're going to do X, Y, and Z, have they done X? Why haven't you done Y and Z? You need to build in these feedback loops and monitor the feedback loops to make sure the information is being used. So there are implications from this discussion for results systems. You need to have common indicators across your monitoring system and your evaluation system. Otherwise, you can't mesh the two. And, oh, sorry, you've got the EGB engine poverty debate. And that's quite a complex discussion. 
as you'll know in India, there's been a big discussion around measuring poverty, which is to do with the recall period. Two minutes. I've had two minutes. Two minutes. To do with the recall. One minute. Okay. Recall, which is to do with the recall period. Uh, you can validate monitoring data through evaluation surveys, and you can use monitoring indicators across the causal chain, which are useful impact evaluations. But recognise that monitoring can't go, monitoring can't tell you the impact of programmes that need the counterfactual. Okay, so in summary, agency-wide performance measurement systems have an important role to play in the results agenda. Results agenda means nothing about a good AWPMS. And impact evaluations need to be built into that system. The credibility of the system depends on the triple A's of aggregation, alignment, and attribution. All three of those need to be in place for the AWPMS to work. One that's not there, one that building block's not there, the AWPMS falls down. These issues that are addressed at agency level may require agency specific solutions. Without putting them in place, you will not be able to answer your boss's question of how are we doing. 